away from Sacramento Kings basketball. Basketball that counts. The regular season, the home opener, season opener tomorrow night. Kings and Timberwolves. And, of course, you can hear every game right here on Sacktown Sports, but you can also watch them on television as well. And that's where you'll see the lovely, the talented analyst, Katie Christensen, back again. And Katie's joining us this morning. Katie, good morning. Good morning, Jay Ross. Are you ready for this? I am ready. I'm actually very excited about the season. I, di- I didn't love the preseason, but I-, I can maybe push that aside and-, and rationalize that it was preseason. But I am I am ready. How about you? I I always say this. I will be ready tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. So both, you know, mentally, physically, you know, the whole the whole shebang. It's, it's interesting because, you know, you just you get one preseason game, which ironically was the very first game, which was a really weird game to call because generally in the first preseason game, not a lot of your main guys play big minutes. Um, and then there was a huge break. And then now I'm, you know, you just get kind of thrown right back into it, but I'm excited to see what this team looks like this year. Yeah. So let's, let's start kind of with what you are optimistic about what you like. You went to, I know you were practice the other day. You've watched this team in the preseason. You called the one game. So as they start, what do you feel like, okay, the Kings could put their hat on this and this will be good. What what do you like about what you think you're going to see tomorrow night? Well, yeah, I watched practice yesterday. They had a really spirited scrimmage to end. Um, I'll start with that and just say I think one of the things that I'm most relieved about is to see that they're they're very close to fully healthy, which is important. Obviously, you've got a couple guys, you know, that aren't going to be back for a while. But in terms of the, the main guys at the moment, um, we're, it's looking good. But, you know, I think, you know, watching the preseason from what I was able to see, I, I think that, you know, those the starting five that we saw in that first game, which included Keon Ellis, and I know that that's, you know, likely to probably shift a little bit with Kevin Herter getting back healthy. Um, I, I like the fit of DeMar De'Aaron and Domas and that's it's early yeah you know it's early and we'll see how it develops and I think one thing is very clear this isn't the type of offense that fits every type of guy right um the the reality of it is is I, I remember as a player there are some guys that are highly intelligent read the game well can read and react which is very much what this offense is um, and there are other players that, that need structure, that need to run plays, that need, you know, that, to not have to think the game as much while they're out there doing it. So, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see um, DeMar kind of getting into the groove in terms of what this team is about. And it's, it's, it's evident to me that there's still, you know, room that he uh, has to, to make up and he's still learning things and he's still learning players. And that is, you know, a hundred percent, you know, expected at this point. Um, but he is a proven player in this league, very intelligent player and a really great teammate. So I like what I'm seeing so far in that, in that aspect. So what would be before the season starts, it's probably unfair, but just going in, what are your, your some of your concerns and what are some trouble spots potentially for this team? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I think that everyone's big question mark is about the two spot. And I, you know, I listened to your segment on my way home from dropping the kids off at school. And it's the big question of who's going to be starting at that two guard. And um, I think my main concern there is that with the addition of DeMar, who is a, is a phenomenal scorer, but not really a three point threat. Um, doesn't take a high volume, can knock him down, but that's not his game. We know that. I mean, and I kind of love that he knows who he is. And even though the NBA has changed, it hasn't made him less effective in terms of going to his, to his, you know, sweet spot in his game. But I kind of feel like you need more shooting in that starting lineup around De'Aaron and Domas and now DeMar, because I, I fear if you don't have, a legit proven two point or three point score um, at that, at that two spot that it's going to muddy the waters a little bit for those guys. So, you know, I think that Kevin had a rough year last year, but I'm excited to see him coming off of his injury and, 
if he's able, I think it was more mental in, in my opinion last year. And so to me, that's kind of a big thing, right? Is finding the rotations and the combinations that work well together. You got a ton of three point shooting coming off of the bench. What do you have in that starting lineup? And when you think about it, the, the style and the, and the games of, you know, two of the main guys, Damar and, and De'Aaron, you know, you need somebody that is capable of, of effectively stretching the floor. Yeah, and her certainly can be that guy. We know Malik Monk can be that guy. He's coming off the bench. Uh, you, speaking of the bench, as we're talking with Katie Christensen, it's always kind of a debate as the year begins. You know, every, it seems like they're so deep. They got so many different guys to play. And then as the year goes on, it just coaches generally get to about a nine, maybe 10 player rotation. What's your feel on, on how many guys coach Brown may play and that if it is nine to 10, there's a couple of talented guys that may be left out of the, of the mix. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is, this is always a fun thing to do before game one, right? You know, like, what is it going to be like in game, you know, 65, what, what is the rotation going to be like? Who's going to be in, who's going to kind of be out and fall kind of um, to the side a little bit. Well, I think last year is a perfect example and you just never know because of injuries. Like if there weren't the injuries that they had last year, we would truly have no idea what Keon Ellis is capable of. And so to me, it's just like one of those things you have to play the season that is laid out in front of you. And that includes injuries and all of the things. Um, So, I mean, I'm super excited to see Trey Lyles was at practice yesterday. I'm not sure what his status is going to be going into tomorrow. He was active in practice in the scrimmage yesterday, and he was just knocking down threes and playing super confident, super um, kind of, uh, what's the best word for it? Like, he was he was gunning yesterday. <laughs> and one of the things I don't think a lot of people know about Trey, um, he runs his mouth which is phenomenal to me. Like he is, he gets in people's heads, he's vocal, he's confident. And we've seen it a little bit when there's been like, you know, kind of some, some tussles out on the floor. And I think maybe it surprises people a little that a trade will go and get involved. That one with Brooke Lopez a couple of years ago yeah. is one that always comes to mind for me. Um, I think that he was really missed last year. He started off the year with an injury. If I remember correctly, it was either like a groin or a hamstring. Um, he missed, you know, a handful, a legitimate chunk of time, comes back, and I believe his first game back was maybe Detroit last year. This is really making me have to go back in that memory bank. But then he had another injury. So he never got a full – he was always coming back from something last year. I want to see um, – him healthy and what he can provide because I think he's so key in that second unit um, because it allows them to play multiple different styles of basketball. You can put him at the five and go small ball. You know, he can be that, that stretch for he's a highly intelligent, you know, defender. He's obviously not a leaper. He's not an above the rim guy, but he is such a good team concept defender that no matter what position he is put in, whether it's the four or the five, you can really have a lot of versatility with him on the floor. So that second unit to me, I feel like they have a lot of strength. It's about health being healthy and seeing like some of the new guys, Doug McDermott getting my eyes on him for the first time yesterday. And, and, you know, with the, with the Kings, obviously very familiar with them. Um, you know, in his career, but man, just such a great pickup. I love that pickup for our second unit. Um, smart, smart guy, really fits in well, shoots the ball well. They look for him. They know how to get him to his spot. He is not shy. He knows his role. And then, you know, Malik Monk, I know that's a big question mark for people. Should he be in that, that, you know, starting five? Um, Mike has had him coming off of the bench in the preseason. Um, and that was kind of a big topic during free agency for him. Like it's important for him to start, but I think that, you know, how you look at it is his role in terms of how he runs that second unit and makes them really competitive. I think it's, it's important. And um, no matter what, 
you know, I would I would be shocked, Jason, if he's not closing out games yeah. every single time. Yeah. You know, speaking of closing out games, one thing I'm anxious to see, Katie, they've got two players that have proven the last couple of years since this clutch award has been around that De'Aaron Fox won it. Uh, DeMar DeRozan's been in the running. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a game that you're on the call for, and it's closing seconds. Kings are either tied with the lead or or down one or two and need a big basket. They've got good options there. I'm anxious to see how that plays out maybe the first time or a couple times this year, whether they go to Fox, DeRozan, or even someone else on that roster because they've got two of the better clutch players in the league. Well, yeah, and like I was just talking about, you know that Malik is going to be in those closing lineups. True. And, man, he was super clutch last year uh, for the Kings. And so you do have a lot of options. And, I mean, when you think about DeMar and De'Aaron and kind of where they always, you know, the last few years have fallen in terms of, you know, clutch players and, and points scored in the fourth quarter, that kind of stuff, like they are their top three, you know. And they're now on the same team. So what that allows you to do is it takes so much pressure off of you offensively because you've got two proven guys that have a ton of confidence uh, in those moments. And now what it does to defenses is just, you know, it, it destroys them because they have to focus on two, if not three guys in the league that are completely capable of owning those moments. So, you know, I don't know how many close games we're going to be in. I would love to believe that it's going to be a 10 point game every time and we're not going to have the stress, but that's not how this no, works. You know better. So I, I am excited. I am really excited to, to kind of see, you know, how this all pans out and how they have to get into a groove and they have to trust each other and they have to, to be willing to also, you know, in those moments, make the best play, not force the play because you're the guy type yeah. thing. Uh, last thing for you, Katie, we do appreciate your time this morning and look forward to you on the call all season long uh, for the Kings. Uh, they get the T-Wolves. It opens tomorrow officially. I know they got started last night with a loss. I think this is going to be a good team. They were a good team a year ago. Little changes uh, moving out from Carl Anthony Towns and adding Randall and DiVincenzo, but this has been a good defensive team, a team the Kings actually played pretty well last year. What are your thoughts leading into tomorrow night's matchup for the home and season opener for the Kings? They played them incredibly well last year. I mean, this was a team that was one of the top teams in the West, and the Kings just had their number, matchup-wise. But I have no idea what to expect because of the changes. Julius Randle has been a player that the Kings have just struggled against because of his style of play. He is more in, in terms of you know likening him to another player. It's kind of like the Zion Williamson, like just the the big, strong, bully ball type of guys. And the Kings have not fared well against that in the past. So that's the big question mark for me is, is kind of how they're going to match up, how they're going to handle that matchup. And then, you know, the next game, it's LeBron James. So very much the same, <laughs> the same situation in terms of handling guys that physically are just very dominating and you don't really have someone that matches up perfectly with them so it's going to be a team kind of thing but I think the one thing the Kings kind of have on their side in in opening night against them is that that's a big change bringing Randall in and so they haven't quite figured it out yet kind of like we probably haven't quite figured it out with Zamar yet so you know you've got to you've got to take advantage of the spots where you can and getting them early before they're they're clicking probably not a terrible thing yeah well, it all starts for real tomorrow. The grind, the journey, however it's looked at, it's probably both for everyone. Uh, we know it's a busy year ahead for you, Katie. Thank you so much for taking some time out today, and we look forward to seeing you out at the arena tomorrow. All right, you guys. Enjoy uh, opening night tomorrow. Huh? Y yes, we will. Thank you, Katie. All right. All right, that's uh, Kings television analyst Katie Christensen joining us. You can look forward to hearing Katie every week with us. We always appreciate her thoughts and insight and uh, it's here tomorrow night, the opener. We're going to talk more about that as the Kings get the Timberwolves. Katie shared her thoughts on that. She 